Happy New Year poll friends. Today I was just sitting down to decide what my poll goals were going to be for 2022 and I thought it'd be fun to make a video and invite you all in on the process and just the five steps that I take to help myself and my clients see success with all of their pole dancing goals. So our first step for today is to set SMART goals, which I'm not going to spend too long on because I'm sure this is a topic you've all spent time learning about. But remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So simply telling yourself, I want to get more flexible and stronger for pole isn't going to be a good enough goal to get you up off the couch and to help you start seeing results in your training. Instead, we need to create something a little bit more specific. So for myself, I've set myself three specific goals for this year. I want to improve my entry and my squareness in my Rainbow Machenko. I want to be able to achieve my flat feet consistently in my chest stance. And I also have a new move that I want to tick off the bucket list, a variation of a Lillabella. So to make these goals smart, I'm going to Make sure they're specific first. So they are very specific. A Rainbow Machenko, flat feet in a chest stand, and a, a particular move that I want to tick off my bucket list this year. Um, I also want to make sure that I'm going to decide how I'm going to measure those goals. Uh, so obviously for my Rainbow Machenko goal, that one's going to be mainly measured through photos. So measurements can be uh, like a tape measure. So if you split for a new goal list, how close is your pelvis to the floor? Um, it could be the angle. So maybe shoulder flexibility is your goal and you want to measure the angle of degrees in your of your current shoulder flexibility. Uh, photos are a good one as well. And we can really break those photos down and see where the strengths and the weaknesses currently are and kind of measure the progress through those photos as well. So for my Rainbow Machenko, I'm um, squaring, what I say, I wanted to square myself off and I also wanted to um, make the entry a bit smoother. So for me, I'm gonna be measuring that through videos and photos. And I also had my new trick. Um, so that one's obviously, I wanna be able to achieve it with a nice straight leg. So that one's gonna be quite easy to measure through photos. And same thing with my chest stands as well. Um, the chest stand, I could measure, um, you can actually download photo apps and you can measure the angle as well. So I could measure the um, angles of my bend in my back as well. That would be another good way to measure it. Um, it's definitely something that's achievable this year as well. So make sure it's definitely achievable. Um, realistic is def different to achievable as well. Realistic is just making sure that you have the resources available. So do you have the money and the time um, to spend on a coach? Um, do you have the motivation? Just the resources that you need to achieve that goal. And then time, so just setting a time frame. Um, which I am going to do. I just want to um, get through the next steps before I set an exact time frame. Um, but yeah, so just setting that SMART goal and we're already through step number one. Step number two is finding your why. That is the reason why you want to achieve those goals. Now for everyone, this reason why is something very different. And the trick is to make sure that it creates some emotion in your body. It almost brings it tear to your eye. Because this reason why is gonna be the thing that helps you when you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix, eating potato chips, deciding if you should get up and train. This is gonna be the thing that's gonna help you get up, get on the mat, and complete all your training sessions. Now again, this reason why can be different for everybody. For me, personally, if I take a look at my three goals that I've written down for the year, Number one being my Rainbow Machenko. I have only ever personally been able to complete this successfully on stage once. Um, and the other two times I have fallen out of it and it's really disappointed me because I have popped so much work into achieving this move. And the disappointment that's given me is pretty, like it's pretty intense. I'm sure every pole dancer knows that feeling. So my reason why behind improving that entry and wanting to square that off and working on that further is show that I can put it on stage and not fall out of it again because I don't, I don't want to go through that uh, disappointment again. And to be honest, that's a lot of motivation for me to get up off the couch and go get in the studio and complete the necessary training sessions that I need to achieve that goal. So now that you've got your goal and your reasons why behind that goal, we can move on to step number three. Step number three is to write it down, break it down and schedule it in. One of my favorite quotes by Tony Robbins, I've got it written down here because it's one of my favorite quotes. 
is if you talk about it, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. But if you schedule it in, it's real. So it's really important now that we go write those goals down and not only write them down, but schedule them in. So I've already, as we've been talking, written down, firstly in blue, what my pole goals were. So my rainbow machenko, my chest stand, and my Lilabella needle scale variation. My reason why behind each of those goals. Now, once you've written those down, it's very important now that we break that down into smaller goals. So let's use my rainbow machenko as an example. So I already know where my weaknesses and my strengths lie in this move. So I know exactly what I need to do to see improvements here. Um, so I know that I need to schedule in at least two off the pole contortion sessions a week. And then one, uh, I guess, contortion and pole session completely dedicated just to my rainbow machenko and I know I can only do that rainbow machenko once a week because it's going to take me that whole week to recover again uh, before I start again um, but this is stuff that I've kind of learned over my few years of training training students um, and I guess just kind of keeping track of my journal as well, which we will definitely go over. Um, but just breaking that down into smaller goals, which can be really hard. So if you're not sure what you need to do to achieve those goals, then I thoroughly suggest booking in with a coach who does know, um, who can take a look at your body, your current fitness level, and what you need to be able to do to achieve that goal. Uh, but for me, I know for that Rainbow Machenko, it's gonna be uh, two contortion sessions a week and then one Oh, sorry, well, let's say it's three contortion sessions a week, two of those are off the pole, and then one is gonna include that rainbow machenko. And now I thoroughly suggest writing those steps down. So once you've then written down the steps that you need to take to see these goals out, we can then break them down into even smaller goals. So I've written in, I needed to be doing three contortion sessions a week, two of those are off the pole, one is gonna be dedicated to I'm training my rainbow Machenko on the pole. And I've also written here, one of my contortion sessions is gonna be with a coach who knows exactly where my strengths and weaknesses are um, to hold me accountable as well. Um, and just for helping me kind of see out my goals, keeping me on track. I've also written in there, I'm gonna to have to schedule in one recovery, at least one recovery session in a week. Um, whether that be like massage, seeing chiro or physio, whether it's just my own recovery at home uh, with like foam rolling and trigger point stuff. I've written that in. From there, we can break it down even further into saying, okay, I know to achieve this, I need to work on my shoulder flexibility. So I need to specifically work on increasing the range of motion, maybe the active flexibility in those shoulders, or maybe I need to um, work on my glute strength. So I'll then go down and break it down even further. So I know exactly what I need to do each of those training sessions to see out those goals. And then from there, it's important that we schedule those training sessions in. I like to sit down every Sunday and write down in my calendar. So I use a Google Calendar on my phone and my laptop, and I'll schedule in exactly what days I'm gonna be training at what times, and exactly what I'm gonna be doing during that day. Um, this is really important. So you should be treating that scheduled session as a doctor's appointment and not saying no. And trust me, if you write it down and schedule it in, you're gonna be more likely to stick with that training session than if you were to just go about your week, just spending all your time wondering, hmm, when am I gonna fit my training in today? What time? Oh, what am I gonna be doing in my training session today? And you just end up wasting a lot of time then going, yep, today at 3 p.m. I'm training. Um, and then you can just kind of plan everything else around that. Step number four is to journal your progress. So you probably already noticed that I've been writing down my pole goals and my why, and then my broken down smaller goals into a journal. So this is actually gonna be my pole journal for this year. And I take this with me to every single training session. But before I get to my training sessions, I do, well personally I only plan my uh, week schedule a week in advance. For my clients, I usually plan out a whole two to three months in advance. Uh, but for myself, um, I know I'm pretty uh, consistent with my training. I don't um, tend to skip a lot of training sessions. I know I'm already quite good. So I just kind of spend, I just sit down each Sunday 
spend about five to 10 minutes just scheduling each of my workouts in. Um, so I'll schedule that into my Google Calendar and then I'll sit down in my journal and each day I'll kind of write down exactly what I plan to train that day. So when I get to the studio in my practice sessions, I don't sit there for half an hour scrolling through Instagram wasting 30 minutes of my time wondering what I'm gonna be training that day. I'm gonna know exactly what's on the schedule for that day. I can get in, do the correct warm up I need for those tricks and just get straight into it. Um, so again, on that Sunday, I'll write down exactly what I'm gonna do in each of those training sessions. And then at the end of the training session, I like to write little notes in that journal. So I'll write down things like, I was too sore today and I couldn't do that particular trick. My hamstrings were still sore from yesterday. Um, I might write good notes in like, today was amazing. I held an amazing flat jade split and I did three really strong inverts in a row. Um, so just little notes so that when I then sit down again next Sunday, I can look at it and go, okay, well, I, I wrote down here that I was still too sore from the previous training session. So maybe I need to spread those true training sessions apart and have a little bit more recovery in between. So rather than go a contortion, contortion, strength day, maybe I need to go a contortion, a strength, and then a contortion day, uh, if that's kind of making sense. And you can start to kind of create your perfect training routine from there. Uh, but this can be something that's really good to do with a coach as well, because we have a lot of experience in helping people plan out their training. And then, I can, yeah, obviously next training session that I book that in, I can kind of from there keep track of how I'm going with my goals as well. So next training session, I can see I had a really good one last week or I had a really bad one and just kind of what I need to work on this week to make sure that I either also have a good week or um, kind of improve on from, I guess, the not as good training session. Um, so yeah, I'll always journal that down and it just, it just helps me keep on track of my goals, uh, make sure that I am heading in the right direction. And I do recommend this to all my students and clients as well, so I can see how they're going. And that way I can kind of best map out their plan um, because it definitely, it changes a lot. It's not one set out plan. So go get yourself a poll journal because it really does make a big difference to your training. Something I definitely recommend. Final step for today, step number five is just to create some accountability. So your accountability is the thing that's gonna make sure that you definitely hit those goals and stick to your training routine. I'm sure you all know motivation doesn't last forever and whilst it might be really high right now, it's not gonna last forever. I'm sure you've all joined up to a fitness program at a gym, maybe you've signed up to a flexibility program at your pole studio, and you probably stuck with it really well for the first week, maybe even the second week if you were really good. But by like week three, week four, you might find you started to miss a few training sessions, not giving those training sessions your full energy, or if you were on a fitness program, maybe you started to let some chocolate creep in. And then by week seven, week eight, you were just completely off the plan. You'd missed a lot of training sessions, let all the naughty snacks sneak in, and you just kind of fell off the plan. And that's when I find most people kind of fall into that yo-yo cycle of, ah, well, I failed this time, we'll just wait until next time, wait until next month, next week, next year, whatever it is. Um, we wanna try and get ourselves out of that yo-yo cycle. Uh, so creating accountability. So one thing for me that I like to do create, to create accountability is getting a coach. So I can, I have, a, I'm a coach myself, but I also do always book in a coach. Um, it just helps keep me accountable to my training. Um, it means that I have an eye on me as well, because I can't see what my body looks like when I'm doing tricks. It's nice to have someone looking in. Um, and then if you book that session in, that coach is going to be waiting for you. Um, and if you don't quite have that money resource to pay for a coach, then get yourself a friend, um, a, a friend who is also really motivated to hitting those goals. So you're both organized to book the same practice session. One's gonna be sitting there waiting, or your friend's gonna be sitting there waiting for you if you don't show up to that training session. So a friend, a coach. Another one is obviously your diary. So if you um, popped it in your diary, tick it off as you go. It feels really good to tick things off. I personally find it feels really good. Um, well, you can even pop it on your calendar. So I like to put, write down what I did that day on my calendar um, and I can see it visually on the fridge. And at the end of the month, I can see how many ticks I gave myself, or how many I didn't. <laughs> I see why I had a good month and why I didn't. But they're kind of the best ways I've found to hold myself and my 
my clients accountable. And I've also kind of held myself accountable now by telling all you guys what my goals are. So let me hold you accountable and everyone else watching this video hold you accountable and leave me a comment below with what your goals were. If you wanna share, I'd love to know what your reason why is behind the goal, but I understand this can be very personal, so if you don't wanna share it, that is fine. If you want bonus points, let me know how you're gonna hold yourself accountable as well. But if inverts are on your goal list, then stay tuned because my next video is gonna be all about inverts and invert technique. I'm gonna be going into the nitty gritty about muscle engagement, how you engage your muscles correctly to give you a no kick, effortless, injury-free invert. But also please just make sure you give this video the thumbs up, leave me that comment below and subscribe to my channel so I can keep bringing you more valuable content just like this video.